Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. So one of the things that surprised me is that when you look at the Ceausescu's on YouTube, there is a shit ton of videos and documentaries on Nikolai Ceausescu, the president of Romania and the dictator of Romania from the 28th of March 1974 until the 22nd of December 1989. But what about the person he was executed alongside on the 25th of December 1989? Somebody who debatably, despite not being the leader of Romania, was probably the brains of the Ceausescu regime and may have played an equal, if not higher role to Nikolai and in some ways a more prominent role during the insanity that was Romania during the communist Ceausescu regime. His wife Elena. Indeed, there are no videos looking directly and solely at Elena Ceausescu. So today we are going to do something a little bit different and look at the life of Elena Ceausescu and find out was she really the mother of the nation as by her own confession she raised and cared for Romanians like a mother or was she an insane power hungry woman who created a cult of personality that would make Kim Jong-un jealous. Was she born to be in power or was she thrust into the political limelight against her will and did she really love her husband? Well, let's find out. Who was Elena Ceausescu? Ultimately, Elena was a very unique individual. Not only was she a dictator's wife, but she wasn't just a handbag. She was a psychopath and played a key role in the Romanian Communist Party and in many ways was the brains of the operation behind the communist regime in Romania and in many ways the only person who can be compared to her is Jiang Qing, the fourth wife of Mao Zedong. As for wives of most other communist leaders and indeed the leaders of most countries to this day remain mere handbags. So Elena Ceausescu was born Lenuta Petrescu in a middle peasant family in Petresti commune in the Dambovita county of Munenita, Romania, in the south of the country. Today it has a population of 5,085 people and on the Wikipedia page Petresti's claim to fame is that it was where Elena was born. She was one of two children with an older brother George Petrescu, who went by George, and was the child of Nea and Alexandrina Petrescu. She was born on the 1st of January 1916, the year when Romania would enter the First World War against Austria-Hungary on the 27th of August 1916. However, the country would struggle in the First World War with a lack of equipment, qualifications and a lack of infrastructure. However, she wasn't born into Romania, she was born into the Kingdom of Romania, a constitutional monarchy. Ney Patrescu was a ploughman and Elena was brought up in absolute poverty. Only undertaking elementary education and dropping out of education at 14, she failed nearly all of her subjects according to one of her report cards and teachers wanted her to repeat her school year, which she refused, and she only passed music, sports and manual work. She moved with her brother George Petrescu to the capital of Romania, Bucharest, after working in the fields for a few years. She initially worked as an unskilled worker in a pharmaceutical factory. Through her brother's connection, she would begin an apprenticeship at the Jacquard Textile Factory before becoming a laboratory assistant at a chemical factory, which became a key element in the manifestation of the cult of personality behind Elena Ceausescu. While in Bucharest, she attended night courses at the local Polytechnic, but was near illiterate and ended up cheating on one of her exams, leading to her being expelled from the Bucharest Municipal Adult Education Institute, and she never received her bachelor's degree. The teacher that expelled her confessed that they lived in fear for decades when the Ceausescu's came to power. In 1937, she joined the then illegal Romanian Communist Party branch in Bucharest. She was active in the organization committee of the Communist Youth in Bucharest. Founded on the 8th of May 1921, the Romanian Communist Party was outlawed in 1924, with Romania under a de facto dictatorship of King Carol II. However, in 1936, with most members having operated from the Soviet Union, the party reformed itself and it seemed realistically possible that Romania could become a communist country as the 1930s and 1940s rolled along. 
It was in 1939 that she would meet a 21 year old who would change not just the course of her life, but the course of her country for decades and indeed the history of her country, Nikolai Ceausescu. Upon meeting her, Nikolai was instantly attracted to Elena and allegedly this meant that he would never look at another woman in the same light again. However, this wasn't the first Ceausescu she dated. She initially dated his older brother, Magin Ceausescu, before the pair broke up and she ended up dating Nikolai. However, Nikolai was arrested in the same year for conspiracy against social order, spending time in prisons and various internment camps including Gilava in 1940, Carnzebes in 1942, Vacaresti in 1943 and finally Tagu Giu in the same year. While Nikolai was held in Tagu Giu, Elena visited him many times. This wasn't the first time, however, that he was arrested. He was also arrested in 1936 for communist activities and sent to Doftana prison. During World War II, Romania was initially a neutral country under the rule of King Karl II. However, the political party, the Iron Guard, rose in popularity with a totalitarian fascist regime governing Romania from the 14th of September 1940 until its dissolution on the 14th of February 1941. And it was with the rise of the Iron Guard that on the 23rd of November 1940, Romania would join the Axis parties. 43rd Prime Minister of Romania from the 5th of September 1940 until the 23rd of August 1944 was Ion Antonescu, who was disposed of following the continued Allies bombing of Romania from 1943 and the advancing Soviet armies invading Romania in 1944, which led King Michael of Romania to hold a coup de tort dispose of Antonescu and put Romania onto the side of the Allies with Antonescu executed on the 1st of June 1946. Following the end of the Second World War, Romania was occupied by the Soviet Union becoming a communist state under the Romanian People's Republic in 1947. Following the forced abdication of King Michael I on the 30th of December 1947 with the country under the leadership of George Georgiou Dej as the General Secretary of Romania. In 1945, Elena began working as a secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs but was dismissed for incompetence. She then started to hold positions as a party instructor. On the 23rd of December 1946, the Ceausescu's would marry. On the 17th of February 1948, they would have their first child, Valentin. On the 28th of February 1949, they had their second child, Zoya. Under the leadership of Georgiou Dej, Ceausescu would become the Secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture, becoming Deputy Minister in March 1949. However, Elena ultimately remained an unimportant and insignificant figure in the Romanian Communist Party. Their final child, Niku, was born on the 1st of September 1951. However, on the 19th of March 1965, Georgiou Dej died and while Ceausescu wasn't the preferred leader, he would become General Secretary on the 22nd of March 1965. However, Elena was little more than the wife of a leader. She was sidelined and Nikolai refused to share power with her and her lack of education barred her from true political ascendancy within the Romanian Communist Party. So she decided to get an education. Well, sort of. In 1957, she was hired as a research scientist at the National Institute for Chemical Research and in the early 1960s became secretary of the party committee of the Bucharest Central Institute of Chemical Researchers. In 1966, she was awarded the Order of Scientific Merit First Class. On the 8th of December 1967, she got a PhD in chemistry, with her thesis being stereospecific polymerization of isbogane on the stabilization of synthetic rubbers on compolymerization and I do apologize if I mispronounced any of that I did fail all of my chemistry exams in high school so don't blame me the public defense of a thesis was changed so that she only needed to submit a written defense 
Her written thesis was scheduled to take place at 7.30am a few days later, with hundreds of people turning out to see her defend her thesis, but they found out that the presentation was moved to 6am and was already over when they arrived, when in reality it had never occurred, with her thesis having been presented to Christopher E. Simoniescu and Ioan Ugosu at the University of Iasi in Iasi. But why the University of Iasi? Well, she wanted to receive her doctorate from the Bucharest Faculty of Chemistry, but this was met with strong opposition from the Romanian chemist Constin D. Nenitescu, which led to her completing her thesis at the University of Iasi. In May 1974, she was made a member of the Romanian Academy's Section for Chemical Sciences and was given many honorary awards for scientific achievement in the field of polymeric chemistry and was named as co-creator on numerous patents. But it wasn't just Romania she had fooled with her scientific prowess. It was the world. In addition to more than 20 books and scientific papers that were allegedly written by her, she received four honorary doctorates, became an honorary member of seven chemistry institutions and societies, and an honorary professor at the Polytechnic of Central London in 1978, which would become the University of Westminster in 1992. Her husband's ability to walk a tightrope of being a communist nation, but also being seen as the West's only ally of the nation states in the Warsaw Pact led Elena to gain doctorates and professorship from traditional communist allies, including an honorary doctor of the University of Tehran in 1975, as well as become a member of the New York Academy of Sciences in 1973, as well as become an honorary member of the member of the American Institute of Chemists in Washington DC in the same year. People in the Romanian Communist Party had to refer to her as Comrade Elena Ceausescu, world-renowned scientist. But in reality, Elena Ceausescu was a crap scientist, even though her work is still quoted to this day, and there is no evidence that she wrote her PhD. She was mocked by many scientists and nicknamed Kodoy because of her mispronunciation of CO2. To this day, we don't know who wrote her PhD, and a controversial issue remains. What the hell do we do with Elena's qualifications and her papers, with her papers still quoted to this day? Something that The Guardian describes in 2021 as a moral dilemma. Her PhD was never revoked, and the institutions that honoured her, from the UK's Royal Society of Chemistry to the University of Westminster, never rescinded her titles. In 1969, Romania got television, but Elena was obsessed with her profile, particularly by the 1980s, and was never seen to her side due to her large nose, and was always seen face on. Accompanying her husband on trips overseas, in June 1971, she visited the People's Republic of China and took note of how Jiang Qing, Chairman Mao Zedong's wife, maintained a political position, despite Chairman Mao being in power. Equally, during this trip, the pair visited Mongolia, North Vietnam, and most significantly, North Korea, with Nikolai Ceausescu enthralled with the personality cult that Kim Il-sung had created under Juche, and he became determined to create a similar cult of personality under the July thesis within Romania. In many ways, this is exactly what happened, with Elena becoming more involved in the Romanian Communist Party from July 1972, and taking on senior levels, and becoming a full member of the Romanian Communist Party Central Committee, as well as a member of the Politburo of the Romanian Communist Party in June 1973, making her one of the few wives of communist leaders to hold a high political office. In November 1974, she was made a member of the Political Executive Committee, and despite having been married to Nikolai since 1946, she would only become the First Lady of Romania on the 28th of March 1974. In March 1975, she was elected to the Great National Assembly, holding the seat for Pitesti, the largest city of the Argest County, and an important commercial and industrial hub in Romania. In January 1977, she became a member of the highest party body, the Permanent Bureau of the Political Executive Committee. By 1979, she was part of a second cabinet. 
On the 29th of March 1980, Elena became the first Deputy Prime Minister of Romania and officially the second most powerful person in Romania. But she was also labelled as the second most powerful woman in the 1980s after Margaret Thatcher. In many ways, while always next to and leading her husband, it is debatable that she was more powerful than him and the most powerful person in Romania. It was here that the personality cult of Elena intensified, with her vanity and desire for honours exceeding that of Nikolai, and she was exalted as the mother of the nation, with poems and songs written about her and paintings made of her. In reality, according to the Los Angeles Times, however, insiders said that she described her people as worms. She always accompanied her husband on overseas trips with both getting their Tarom frequent flyer points up and was always there with Nikolai, almost like a conjoined twin, playing a more prominent role than the wife of any political leader at the time. Both travelled to communist Warsaw Pact countries as well as to NATO members including to meet the Queen and Prince Philip in the United Kingdom in 1978 with Nikolai Ceausescu knighted. On the 26th of October 1970, Nikolai would become the first communist leader to fly to the United States of America to meet the President of the United States of America, Richard Nixon. Ironically, both Elena and Nikolai went to Disneyland. In December 1973, both would revisit the United States of America and re-meet President Nixon. And then, on the 12th of April 1978, they flew once again to the United States of America to meet President Jimmy Carter. They also flew to Australia on multiple occasions between 1977 and 1988 to meet Prime Minister Bob Hawke. In 1998, Australian Prime Minister John Howard quoted Bob Hawke when the Ceausescus visited Australia in 1983, with Hawke telling Howard, who was opposition leader at the time, it was arranged by one of my predecessors, and you know, John, I had to sort of pick up the hospitality. I don't know what we are doing with this bloke here. How are we going to get through it? However, as both Elena's vein and political power grew, Romania throughout the 1980s was collapsing, with Romania bringing in an austerity policy to repay foreign debt equating to $13 billion, with Nikolai having taken out loans to finance economic development programs. The disaster of Romania's economy was exacerbated by the 1973 oil collapse. This led to Romanians unable to survive, with all food exported, indeed the only meat that would remain would be pigs trotters. Many basic goods were rationed and Romania had the highest infant mortality rate in Europe, with a reduced standard of living and increased malnutrition. There were also electronic blackouts, with TV only shown two hours a night between 8pm and 10pm, with many programs dedicated to the personality cult of the Ceausescus. In 1981, Elena would become president of the Romanian National Committee, Scientists and Peace, and in December 1982, was elected vice president of the Supreme Council of Economic and Social Development. Now, there were some challenges to the Ceausescu dictatorship, including a foiled coup d'etat in October 1984 and the failed Brasov revolution against Nikolai's economic policies following the 1987 local election on the 15th of November 1987. However, the Ceausescus never really believed that there would be an end, and there's much speculation that Elena planned to take over when her husband passed away and go from being officially the second most important person in Romania to the most important person in Romania. Their son, Niku, became a member of the Great National Assembly for the Bulzaiu County in 1981, becoming the Minister of Youth and First Secretary of the Union of Communist Youth from the 11th of December 1982 until the 17th of October 1987, before becoming the First Secretary of the Sibiu Regional Committee of the Communist Party. Niku was the only one of the three children involved in politics, and it was aimed that Nicol would take over from his father or possibly from his mother if she should succeed Nikolai. In many ways, the Ceausescu regime aimed to continue as a hereditary dictatorship, similar to that of the Kim regime in North Korea. With time passing, however, Elena would become power crazy. 
when Zola went into research at the Institute of Mathematics of the Romanian Academy in Bucharest in 1975, both Nicolae and Elena were unhappy with her research in mathematics, so the institute was disbanded in 1975. In 1985, she demanded that the Piata Romana metro station be removed in building the metro in Bucharest because she thought that students with the station closest to the University of Bucharest were getting fat and should walk to the university. Equally, in 1987, she ordered the demolition of the Sfanta Vinieri church in Bucharest. This followed Ceausescu destroying much of old Bucharest to build the palace of the parliament. However, on the 9th of November 1989, the Berlin Wall would fall down and Germany would be unified. On the 4th of June 1989, following partially free elections in Poland, communism would end in Poland. On the 23rd of October 1989, communism would end in Hungary, with the Hungarian Socialist Workers' Party losing control. The Velvet Revolution took place in Czechoslovakia between the 17th of November and the 28th of November 1989, which saw Czechoslovakia free of communism. On the 10th of November 1989, Todor Zikov was ousted by his Politburo in Bulgaria. While Romania was not the last communist dictatorship to break up in Eastern Europe, in many ways the Ceausescus were the last hard-line communist regime in the Western Bloc and almost seemed blind to the domino effect that was happening around them. Nikolai, with Elena by his side, was elected in the 14th Congress of the Romanian Communist Party for another five years as the leader of the Romanian Communist Party in November 1989. During his speech at the 14th Congress of the Romanian Communist Party, Nicolae would denounce the fall of communism across much of Eastern Europe. He had no idea how close his end was. On the 16th of December 1989, the government attempted to evict Hungarian Reformed Church pastor Laszlo Tokic who, in an interview in July 1989 with Hungarian television, criticised the Ceausescu's systematisation policy. The protest spread with the protesters breaking into the district committee of the Romanian Communist Party in Timisoara on the 17th of December 1989. With Timisoara in the far west of Romania, gradually the revolution would spread across the country. However, during this time, Elena was in control, with Nicolae Ceausescu on a state visit in Iran. Elena instructed Prime Minister Konstantin Daskaliescu to head for Timisoara to negotiate with the protesters. However, this was not successful. On the 20th of December 1989, Nicolae Ceausescu returned to Romania in an attempt to quell the revolution he gave a televised speech from the TV studio inside the Central Committee building, speaking of the events in Timisoara as an interference of foreign forces and an external aggression on Romania's sovereignty. Once again, Elena was by his side. On the 21st of December 1989, busloads of workers were brought in, under threat of being fired upon, into Bucharest's Palace Square, now Revolution Square, and given red squares, banners, and large pictures of the Ceausescu's, as well as flags, augmented by bystanders, rounded up with the most loyal to the regime placed in front. Elena was on the balcony with Babu Petrescu, the mayor of Bucharest, who organised the rally, introducing Ceausescu. It was on this balcony that Nicolae Ceausescu had addressed the public and given so many speeches, most notably, and probably his most famous speech, that of the 21st of August 1968, where he condemned the Warsaw Pact invasion of Czechoslovakia, with this speech before 100,000 people, and he declared that the invasion of Czechoslovakia was a grave error and constituted a serious danger to peace in Europe and for the prospects of world socialism. Ceausescu would refer to his speech on the 21st of August 1968 during his speech on the 21st of December 1989 and to all intents and purposes, the now blind and power-hungry Nikolai Ceausescu, along with his wife, probably thought that this speech would be just as successful and he could quell any attempt at revolution against his regime. 
However, just over a minute into his speech, a high-pitched scream was heard when Nikolai thanked the organisers of the rally, with TV censors cutting the live TV feed, stating that there was an earthquake in Bucharest, but the disturbance was broadcast across Romania. And for the first time, Romanians saw their leader as a coward and in a vulnerable position. Elena and Nikolai then attempted to calm the crowd down, with Elena wondering if an earthquake was taking place and shouting to them, quiet, with Nikolai telling her to shut up. When the crowd had calmed down, the TV feed resumed and Ceausescu announced that from January 1990, the minimum wage would be increased from 2,000 Romanian lei to 2,200 Romanian lei, an increase of 13 US dollars at the time, with the old age pension increased from 800 Romanian lei to 900 Romanian lei, an increase of $6.50 US at the time. However, more and more people began to take to the streets of Bucharest. And at 9.30am on the morning of the 22nd of December, Vasilia Milier, the Minister of Defence, died of suspicious circumstances following refusal to follow Nikolai's request to fire on the protesters. A report in 2005 determined that Milier had committed suicide. However, many in the army believed that he had been killed on Nikolai Ceausescu's orders, leading the army to turn against him. Nikolai Ceausescu then appointed Victor Stanculescu as Minister of Defence, who had ordered the troops back to their quarters without Ceausescu's knowledge and persuaded the Ceausescus to leave by helicopter, making them fugitives. At the same time, many angry protesters stormed the Communist Party headquarters where the Ceausescus were. Nikolai attempted to address the crowd, but this failed, and their bodyguards were overpowered, with the protesters entering the Communist Party headquarters, reportedly white as a ghost, and both fearful for their lives, both were carried by their bodyguards into their helicopter. The White Dolphin number 203 was flown by Lieutenant Colonel Vasile Tarn with the helicopter carrying eight people when they only had capacity for six people. At 12.08 p.m. on the 22nd of December 1989, they left for Snagov, 40 kilometers north of Bucharest. Then Nikolai Ceausescu took Malutan into the presidential suite and ordered two helicopters filled with an armed guard and a further Dolphin helicopter to come to Snagov. However, Malutan's unit commander replied that there had been a revolution and that they were on their own. Abandoning Vice President Manea Manescu and former Labour Minister Emil Bobu, they headed for Titu, but Malutan said that he had received a national flight's denial and had to land in order not to get shot. However, he feigned engine trouble to the Ceausescu's. He landed in a field next to an old road that led to Pitesi, and he told Ceausescu's and their bodyguards that they were on their own. The four flagged down two cars, one driven by a forestry official and one a red Dacia driven by a local doctor. The doctor reported that when they heard over the radio that the revolution had been successful, Nikolai slumped down knowing that it was over. The doctor then faked engine trouble and the Ceausescu's then flagged down a bicycle repairman who drove them to Tagoviste. The repairman, Nicolae Petristor, convinced them to hide in an agricultural technical institute. The director guided them into a room and locked them in with both arrested at 3.30pm. On the 25th of December 1989, an exceptional military tribunal was held by the newly formed National Salvation Front. The outcome was predetermined and it was determined that they would receive the death sentence and a guilty verdict. The charges were genocide of over 60,000 victims, subversion of state power by organising armed actions against the people and state power, destruction of public property by destroying and damaging buildings, undermining the national economy and attempting to flee the country using over $1 billion deposited in foreign banks, specifically in a Swiss bank account. They were brought in at 5.30am with Elena refusing to participate in a medical examination. The trial took over one hour and they refused to adhere to their lawyer, Nicol Teodrescu's advice that they should adopt an insanity defence. Nikolai did most of the talking while Elena attempted to interject but was told by her husband to shut up. Nikolai refused to recognise the court. 
During the trial, Elena's qualifications were declared null and void. Returning with the judgement, the Ceausescus were ordered to stand up, which both refused to, with Elena insisting that she was old and couldn't. Found guilty, they were both sentenced to death. Under Romanian law, there had to be a week between getting a death sentence and execution, and both seemed to think that this would come to pass, and that their execution would not be immediate. However, both were then taken by army officers, and Elena insisted on both being shot together, stating, together we fought, together we die. This was granted, and both were tied up, with Elena shouting that she had treated them like a mother, and that they were going to break her arms. She also shouted, you sons of bitches. There were five non-commissioned officers, as well as Captain Ionel Boergo, Sergeant Major Georgin Octavian and Dogin Marian Kilan placed against a toilet block the two were fired upon, with 120 bullets hitting them. Elena's last words were, you motherfucker, and that's a great way to go out. The execution happened so quickly that the television crew couldn't capture it. They were told to avoid Nikolai's face to show it to the television camera crew to prove that Nikolai was dead. Elena was not afforded this luxury. After the execution, the bodies were covered with canvases and their corpse were buried in Genica Cemetery in Bucharest on the 30th of December 1989. In 2010, the bodies were exhumed for identification to prove that they were the Ceausescus before being reburied. Indeed, Nikolai Ceausescu still had on the blue coat which he had during his trial and execution. They were also given a proper grave, and fun fact is that if you go to Genkia Cemetery, you can still see their grave. On the 7th of January 1990, capital punishment was abolished in Romania, and Elena would become the only woman executed in modern Romania. Her mother and her brother, who had an important role in the Romanian Communist Party, both outlived Elena. Nicu was arrested on accusations of holding children as hostages during the revolution. In 1990, he was re-arrested for misuse of government funds under his father's regime and sentenced to 20 years in prison. However, he was released in November 1992 because of cirrhosis, having been a heavy drinker throughout his life. He died on the 26th of September 1996 in Vienna, Austria. Zoya was arrested on the 24th of December 1989 for undermining the Romanian economy. She was released on the 18th of August 1990. She attempted to return to her role as a researcher at the Institute for Scientific and Technical Creativity in Bucharest, but was unable to, and with her house confiscated, she started living with friends. A chain smoker, she lived in poverty before dying of lung cancer on the 20th of November 2006. Only Valentin is still alive. He was arrested but released after nine months with no charges against him. He worked at the Institute of Atomic Physics Lab in Magorele, performing nuclear physics research and lives in a house owned by his father-in-law, Constantin Duna. He lives on a pension of 2,000 Romanian lei. Between 689 and 1,290 Romanians were killed during the nine days of the 1989 Romanian Revolution, but how many people died directly as a result of a Ceausescu regime and at Nikolai and Elena's hands would be impossible to calculate. Indeed, The Guardian estimated that 20,000 children had died in children's homes within Romania during the Ceausescu regime. This is as a result of Ceausescu banning contraception and abortion for mothers under Decree 770. Abortion and contraception were only allowed for women over the age of 45 and for women who had born four children. This was later increased to five children. This led to a record number of kids in orphanages within Romania. Moreover, according to Human Rights Watch, Romania did not begin screening blood and blood products for HIV until 1990, which led to around 13,000 children being infected from the late 1980s until the early 1990s with HIV in the state system, with half of them dying. The vacuum of the Ceausescu regime saw Romania engulfed in violent protests throughout the first few months of 1990, with the first free elections in Romania since 1937, held on the 20th of May 1990, with Ion Ileascu winning power.
under the FSN, with 12,232,498 votes, or 85.07% of a vote. However, Romania deeply struggled throughout the early 1990s, with GDP reaching a low of $19.6 billion in 1992, compared to $53.7 billion in 1989, and an average gross monthly wage of just $83 per month in 1992, and an unemployment height of 10.9% in 1994. The country was in absolute chaos from 1990 to until 1995, and it wasn't truly until the turn of the millennium that Romania would find some stability. While all is not rosy in Romania with a population 4 million lower than 1989 in 2022 and roughly 6 million Romanians living overseas primarily for better economic opportunities and an average net wage of just 589 euros per month one of the lowest in Europe. Things have improved with the HDI increasing from 0.678 in 1993 to 0.828, with the country joining NATO in November 2002 and the European Union in 2007. In many ways, today's Romania is a country that Elena would not recognise. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favour and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of when new videos come out. Also, why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment. It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet. Have an amazing day and remember the truth is always more interesting than fuction.